So this is going to be a review. But the reason why I wanted to go over adding and subtracting and then going over a problem like this, because I really want you guys to understand something. Um, when we're adding and subtracting, the goal of that last example was to get them to be 1, right? You're adding two expressions, two rational expressions, and you're combining them to be 1. If you guys notice now, I have entered in an equal sign. I'm not trying to combine two rational expressions. I am now trying to solve for the value of x. Sheldon, you should be looking up here. I should try to be solved for the value of x. All right? So to do this, this is a little bit different, because now we're trying to find the value of x. Well, when we're trying to solve, I don't want to solve with fractions. I want to get rid of fractions. So to get rid of fractions, what I'm going to do is I need to now, I'm going to multiply every single term by the LCD. So I look at this expression. I see that the LCD is x minus 2, um, because that's really like over 1. So I do LCD is just equal to x minus 2. So in this case, instead of combining, I'm now going to eliminate the fractions. So to do that, I multiply everything by x minus 2, every single term, I should say. Okay. So what's helpful about this is, guys, is now you see x minus 2 over x minus 2, those divide to 1. These divide to 1. Now I'm just left with the equation 3x minus 2 plus 3x minus 2 is equal to x. You guys see that? Now, do you guys feel a little bit more confident about solving an equation that looks in this format? Compared to one where it had fractions? Yes. Yeah, because only the x minus 2 is divided to 1. OK. So when you're solving, we're trying to eliminate the denominator. But when you're combining, adding or subtracting, you're trying to find the common denominator so you can combine them. It's a different way of thinking. But if you're not thinking that way, then that would make sense. So now we combine like terms. I get 6x minus 4 is equal to x. I'll subtract the x to get 5x minus 4 equals 0. Add 4, add 4. 5x equals 4 fifths. Oops, sorry. 5x equals 4, divide by 5, divide by 5. x equals 4 fifths. Now, the last important step about this is now we take our answer and we want to double check. Can 4 fifths go in for x? Would that make it 0 in any of my denominators? No, the only number that's going to make it 0 is if I put in 2, correct? So therefore, this solution works. But be careful. It is possible for me to get an answer of 2 and then to notice, oh, 2 is a not a solution. So then you'd have to write no solution. Okay, Not done yet.